Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in which we will discuss the latest enhancements in iOS XR 7.9.1. iOS XR has been one of the most popular and industry leading operating system. With each XR release, we bring in multiple software and hardware features to cater various customer use cases. With iOS XR 7.9.1 as well, we bring in multiple features including software and hardware. In this video, we will discuss some of these enhancements with respect to NCS 5500 portfolio. All this after a short intro. My name is Tejas Lard and I am a technical marketing engineer in the Cisco Provider Connectivity BU. Let us start with the enhancements around the routing protocol OSPF. The first feature we will discuss is around redistribution of type 3 LSAs. Prior to release 791, the maximum redistributed prefixes limit was applied only to those prefixes that are, that are redistributed as type 5 and type 7 LSAs. Starting from 791, the maximum redistributed prefixes limit is also applied to the prefixes that are redistributed as type 3 LSAs. The maximum redistributed type 3 LSA prefix for a given OSPF process is limited to 100,000. If the router redistributes more than 100,000 prefixes as type 3, type 5 or type 7 LSAs, then you must configure a higher limit using maximum redistributed prefix command. This helps in preventing high CPU utilization and memory shortages on the platforms. This feature is supported across the entire NCS 5500 and 5700 portfolio. When the number of LSAs reaches or exceeds the threshold limit or comes back within the threshold limit, the router displays the following logs. Second feature is around limiting the LSA in a link state database. This feature allows you to protect OSPF routing process by limiting the number of non-self-generated LSAs for a given OSPF process. When other routers in the network have been misconfigured, they may generate a high volume of LSAs. This mechanism prevents routers from receiving a large number of LSAs, thereby preventing CPU failure and memory shortages. With this feature, the router keeps a count of number of non-self-generated LSAs it has received. The non-self-generated LSAs for a given OSPF process is limited to 500,000. The max LSA limit was not enabled by default prior to 791 release. Starting from release 791, this command is enabled by default and the default limit of the non-self-generated LSA is set to 500,000. If you have more than 500,000 LSAs in a network, you must configure a max LSA command with the expected LSA scale before upgrading to 791. This feature is supported only on OSPF version 2. It is not applicable to OSPF version 3. This feature is supported across the entire 5500 and 5700 portfolio. When the number of LSAs reaches or exceeds the threshold limit, the router displays the following logs. The next feature is related to BGP, BGP slow peer. This feature allows customers to detect a BGP slow peer in their network. A slow peer is a peer that is processing incoming BGP update messages very slowly over a long period of time as compared to other peers. Slow peer handling mitigates the impacts of slow peer on other peers of the subgroup. Starting from 791, we have made enhancements to this implementation. Customers can now configure slow peer configuration in the global mode. When global slow peer configuration is not enabled, the default slow peer functionality is detection only. It means all BGP neighbor address families are operating in detection only mode. In detection only mode of operation, when a neighbor address family is detected as slow or recovers from being slow, a message is displayed, but there will not be any mitigation to handle slow peers. When slow peer 
global configuration is detection disabled, then slow peer processing is disabled on all BGP neighbor address families. When slow peer global configuration is dynamic, all VRF BGP neighbor address families or default address families operate as dynamic slow peers. In dynamic slow peer mode of operation, whenever a neighbor address family is detected as being slow, in addition to displaying a message, the peer is moved on its own refresh subgroup without impacting other peers in the update group or a subgroup. This eliminates the task of network admin to manually remove the peer and move it to a subgroup. After routing protocols enhancements, let us discuss some of the enhancements around data plane security. With iOS XR791, we can display counter values in bytes in addition to packets when it comes to access list. The use case of this feature is that it helps in gauging the traffic pattern at more granular level in comparison with just packet match. This feature is supported across entire NCS 5500 and 5700 portfolio. The other feature enhancement is around LLDP support. Prior to iOS XR791, LLDP was supported only on the main interface. But in some scenarios, customers need the LLDP packets to be sent over with VLAN tags. If the LLDP is supported only per port or if the platform doesn't support LLDP with VLAN tags, then end-to-end -end LLDP discovery won't happen. To address this problem, from 791, we have started supporting LLDP for sub-interface as well. This is supported across NCS 5500 and 5700 portfolio. The next enhancement is around rate limiting. Customers are very concerned about collateral damage from a storm on a single sub-interface of a particular port. When a single sub-interface on a port is stormed with multicast or broadcast punted traffic, it may impact the performance of all the other sub-interface on that particular port due to NPU resource sharing. From release 791, you can avoid such situations using rate limiting at sub-interface level for the multicast and broadcast punted traffic. You can now configure the multicast and broadcast rate limiting at different levels that is sub-interface level, interface level, global level and domain level. The sub-interface level rate limit configuration has the highest priority followed by the interface, global and domain level. This feature is supported only on NCS 5700 platforms with external TCAM operating in the native mode. Now let us discuss the addition of the optic support. With 791, we introduce the Cisco enhanced 400 gigi ZR plus QDD pluggable optics with up to plus 2 dBm transmit power. It is new high power version of the existing 400 gigi ZR plus module. It has built in EDFA to boost the transmit power. It supports 80 km back to back. We also bring in the Cisco 100 gigi QSFP DD optics. This optics provides customers with a 100 gigi ZR connectivity option for data centers, high performance computing networks, enterprise core and distribution layers and service provider application. It supports signal up to 80 km and more. We extend the support for QDD 4 cross 100 gigi FR S across other platforms of the portfolio. We also extend the support for QSFP 100 gigi ZR4 S across the other platforms in the portfolio. With this release, Following dual rate optics can now be configured for their lower speeds along with the higher speeds. You can now configure the lower speed using simple CLI keyword, speed or quad, and change between higher and lower speeds without changing the optical module. Earlier, by default, only the higher port speed was available. For complete list of optics which are supported on the portfolio, please visit our TMG page and if you still need specific information, please get in touch with us. These were some of the highlights of iOS XR791. Apart from the features we discuss, we also support multiple other features. For technical deep dive on each features, 
please visit our release notes and the config guides related to 791. For recent Cisco updates on segment routing and segment routing v6, please visit segment-routing.net and for eVPN updates, please visit e-vpn.io. If you need further details, please get in touch with us. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and goodbye.